so yeah, as I was saying, Numeric's using a lot of the Brawl Pivot F smashes and implementing Brawl Tech that not a lot of people are implementing. I think it's neat. I think it's really cool that he's doing that. Yeah, um, it's definitely a pretty good tech. Yeah, I just don't use it. I feel like optimi optimized DSS doesn't need it, you know? So I just kind of don't. But, oh, pink versus pink. They're going right into so, the yeah, we'll see. Oh, yeah. the reverse side B. Great spacing tool for DSS. Uh, really catch people off guard and... Uh, it hits really low, so against characters like Game of Watch and Kirby and Jigs, like you can hit them while they're crouching, and as long as they're a high enough percent, they can't crouch cancel it, and it'll lead into bear, bear, uh, yeah. bear the character. There it is. Yeah. So playing friendly with that, and uh, comes to the conclusion that ZSS is back in. Back in is a good kill move. So who wins this matchup? Does the does, does Game of Watch's disjointed hitbox like hurt ZSS um, in any way? I would not say so. So it's kind of even? Yeah, I think ZSS has the disjoint and the speed to work around it. Uh, the combos are brutal, but ZSS has got some nice stuff on Game 1 as well. And yeah, so what we've seen so far in this game is Numeric's using a lot of up beat and up smash. Now, that's like one of the things that I don't agree about with this playstyle. Like, I think up smash is just awful. Like, I don't think you should use it most of the time just because it's so easy to SDI out or just get out of it before the final hit. And even when you get the final hit, the follow-ups are not amazing. But it's it's working for him, so like do what works, I guess. I mean, it's better than nothing if they're too high above you to right. burn out there. Right, yeah. But I'd like to see more uh, Nair strings. He's even doing those like, some upper combos, stuff like that. Oh, okay. Up there. Ooh, that was, that was sub-optimal DI on the down throw. Got to get down smash from that, you had to DI. Okay. And you, do, you want to DI zero suits throws, so like Falcon, or you just DI down in the way so you don't, so you just end up getting a quick taste. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, use the down here. Made it so we can uh, grab the ledge. Alright, now you're set to stage. Um, so Watch and Learn hasn't grabbed the edge once against zero suits up and if you don't grab the ledge against her tether, like you get, you're gonna be led to believe that she has a great recovery. Yeah. But once once you start grabbing that ledge, it's uh, it's really tough for ZSS to mix it up enough where she won't get killed. Especially with stages with no walls. Right. Exactly. Like with walls, you can fade back and then climb the wall, like, like down bead, wall jump, jump, wall jump, air dodge, stuff like that. But when there's no walls, you're really limited. So you might have taken it quick. Yeah, I like reading the chat. This is what we do in the free time. Yeah. Just read the chat. That's all we need. Alright, so we're going to Delfino's, hoping to live a lot longer, but I would not have done this. I think uh, CSS's survivability with a wall to go all the way down to the blast yeah. zone, like, she's gonna live forever if you don't know how to punish Tubby as well. And uh, wa Watch and Learn hasn't really been starting me too well, so it's just gonna be harder for right. her to kill her. Not to mention that Watch and Learn has more disjoint, and the thing that's gonna change Ooh, whether, no. yeah, his platform cancels his down B are sick. I, watch, I love seeing him play around on platforms that. But the, th the thing that's not good is, if you think about it, the thing that helps uh, people that don't have as much range as you to play around your range is space. So if you have more range than someone, you want to give them less space. If you have less range, you want more space. So ZSS, with the exception of a few sort of laggy moves, doesn't have more range than Game Watch. So why would you give game, uh, why would you give ZSS the opportunity to maneuver around your uh, your range? You know, like that's just my opinion. But Watch and learn again. Keep proving me wrong right now with a, with a nice lead here. Yeah, I mean, it could be just be stage preference, you know? Yeah. There's nice back air. back air. And Game Watch's survivability is nothing to, to underestimate. I mean, he's going to live yeah, his, just his, as long as His recovery is very good, but he's, yeah. he's, very, he's really light, so he's going to die easily to a lot of things. And Couch has a down tilt. Great Game Watch strategy. And yeah, so he's just using the one one of the moves. So side B is really the disjoint that ZSS has that is bigger than uh, Game Watch's stuff. I mean, she also has like F smash and she has like up B, but one of those is middle and one of them like why are you using the neutral? Uh, so by using the side B, he's like able to outspace Game Watch, but that's really one of the only moves he has that can do that. And he's making good use of it. Oh, Nair. 
He just did that same on. thing to take the first stock. Yeah. So I guess that's how he's going to start edge guarding now. It'd probably be a lot safer just to grab ledge though. Yeah. So back air, because uh, Watchland didn't sweet spot. Um, when when the opponent is so far or so on stage, like you just got it. You don't go high. Like that's what they want. You just got to go for the ledge. You know, a lot of players I've noticed are kind of scared to sweet spot. Like Advil's a little scared. You see Watchland going super high all the time. Um, you just gotta you gotta embrace the sweet spot. It's gonna save you, but you gotta have faith. In it. Watchland is just throwing out fares right now. And bucketing the uh, paralyzer, but too laggy, and gets grabbed for it. Not worth doing. That was a nice recovery. And back here. It's, oh no, that's like stock. I guess that's the stage. Um, back air, dash attack. It's kind of, I feel like, could have got more off the punish if we didn't dash attack. But oh well. Take these. Up 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 air. Air. Almost killing. I, I don't know if that was good DI or bad DI, but whatever it was, he just died. So. See, that's the thing about tethers. Like people are constantly complaining about how bad they are, but look how fast you can move off stage. Like tethers, offensive usage is absolutely incredible. Yeah. Their defensive like recovery usage is is pretty bad. Oh my God, this combo. Yeah, this is a nice combo. <laughs> but like tethers, recovery wise and defensively, not that good. But when you think about them in the context of off stage plays as a whole and edge guarding and such like that, like they're really nice just because of how fast you can get to the back of the ledge. Yeah, it's pretty good for uh, refreshing your invincibility too. You can quickly grab it and then quickly get back right. onto the ledge. And something neat. Um, so, I suppose I'll explain this after uh, somebody takes a stock or something. But, uh, no, it's fine, no. uh, ZSS, normally when you grab a ledge with any character. Oh, uh, that should be the game. Yeah, it is. So, we're actually taking it too well. But normally when you grab a ledge with a character, there's about seven or so frames where you cannot drop the ledge. Which is, uh, so you lose seven frames of invincibility. Uh, I have to explain this. So you lose 7 frames of invincibility there before you can ledge dash. However, when you grab the ledge with a tether, you can instantly drop it. So it gives you a much more lenient window and more invincibility if you decide to ledge dash perfectly. So, when refreshing your invincibility with ZSS right before you ledge dash, grab them. Just C button, C button, You might be playing Ike though. It's not? Just grab. But yeah, so... Oh, I gotta stop recording. Bowser.